One of the stories of Sherlock Holmes, there is a dog who does not bark. Is there any other point you wish to draw to my attention? To the curious incident of the dog in the night time. The dog did nothing in the night time. That was the curious incident. Sherlock Holmes understands there is much information in the fact that the dog did not bark. It was then I grasped the significance of the silence of the dog. Well, obviously, the midnight visitor was someone whom the dog knew well. Streaker. Exactly the non-occurrence of things was very informative. This next story is about a research that deals with doing nothing. Generally speaking, we have a tendency to neglect the importance of absence of things. And this is the guy who made it. My name is Michael Barelli. Everybody knows me as Mickey. I'm a professor in the Department of Business Administration. He usually deals with sports. I'm trying to test theories and uh, ideas for application for general purposes, not only in sport area. And for him, this whole idea started with this one particular football match. It was the 7th of July, 74. The World Cup Finals. So we're only about a minute into the game, and the Germans have not even touched the ball yet. And then... Goes down, penalty! The first one ever to be called on a Cup Finals. And a player by the name of Niskens shot a penalty to the center of the goal. And we have the most dramatic start! The goalkeeper, he dived. Straight down the middle. And I asked myself, what would have happened had he only stayed standing, not doing anything? The ball would hit him. And it took then 20 years until I had the opportunity to think about the problem in a way which I could uh, investigate and theoretically and give it some meaning. You want to hear about it? Well, excuse me, I have to take some water. Okay, for the next few minutes, these two guys here are going to help us explain this idea. And first of all, if you're not into the whole football-soccer thing, a penalty is basically a face-off between a shooter and a goalkeeper. It happens when there is a foul near the goal or in certain tight games that need to be settled, in which case we have a penalty shootout between the two teams. We think about one out of every four or five balls are stopped. If you're the shooter, you have a huge advantage, and basically, you're expected to score. That's a lot of pressure. But if you're the goalkeeper, for you it's a whole different game. The goalkeeper is in a situation where he can only win, because his chances to stop a ball to begin with are very small, between 20-25 persons. If he stops the ball, he's a hero. So with all these elements of great human drama in place, Barelli and his colleagues decided to see what is it they can learn from a high-stakes duel like that. We collected the data from many penalty kicks. From top leagues, and they discovered something surprisingly profound about goalkeepers. They jump too much. So let's see how it works. It begins with two questions. First, where are the balls shot to? About one third of the balls are shot to the center. And where is the goalkeeper most likely to stop the ball if he guesses its direction correctly? The highest probability, it turns out, would be the center of the goal. Economic models talk about maximization of utility. So if you ask where is the maximal utility of the goalkeeper, would we stand? This is the optimal solution. So what goalkeepers should most often do is nothing. But the goalkeepers jump about 95% of the cases. Basically, there is a gap between where the balls are shot and the behavior of the goalkeepers. Now, these are top league goalkeepers, which makes this really strange. So how can you explain this gap? It turns out it is a perfect example for something called action bias. It's a general name for the many situations in life when it is really hard not to do anything, even if whatever it is you're doing is making things worse. And this is precisely the case of the goalkeepers. And actually, it's not that difficult to apply to many situations. Some examples? According to science, when you're stuck in traffic, aggressively switching lanes doesn't get you any faster to where you're going than just sitting in a single lane. But it does slow down traffic as a whole. <laughs> Many health professionals claim that excessive medical care has become a serious problem in the West and that it's harming patients. A lot of people believe that at least one recent war was the result of the need to do something. But some of the easiest applications for this are in economics. Trading is hazardous to your wealth is a study that showed that over time, most individual investors lose their money. But also that the most active traders are the biggest losers, while those who trade less get much better returns. Doing nothing can literally pay off. 
But like in the case of goalkeepers, this is not just a problem of amateurs. Daniel Kahneman, the Nobel Prize-winning psychologist, also talks about this. He says that 50 years of research and data proves that for the large majority of fund managers, the selection of stocks is more like rolling dice than playing poker. It's mostly about getting lucky, and not much about doing anything. Although, he says, many investors manage to lose consistently, an achievement that, quote, a dart-throwing chimp could not match, and that for most of them, taking a shower and doing nothing would have been a much better idea. But what's going through the goalkeeper's mind in that fraction of a second before they decide to jump? One thing is pretty obvious. They want to look good. They are not economically rational, but they are socially rational. Why is that? A dive looks much more like putting up a fight. And also, they are much more likely to get credit for it. So they have to adapt to the environment. So in this sense, they are rational. But the second reason isn't rational at all. It's purely emotional. They want to feel good. The study showed that they felt better after failing to stop a goal with a dive than by staying idle. So diving isn't all bad, it helps you look good and feel good, but the thing it doesn't help you with is stopping the ball. This is by no means the only situation when the appearance of things or even your own gut feeling can be deceiving. Decision-making experts and behavioral economists argue that humans make a lot of irrational choices. Not because we sometimes make mistakes, but because it is built into our system. We make these irrational choices by design. There's not always a way around this, because it's part of being human, but if there's one thing you can probably take away from this, it's this. Next time you find yourself doing nothing when everybody else seems so busy, remember that it's not necessarily you that are wasting your time. Elementary, my dear Watson. Elementary. Next up, Season 1's final episode. Cloud Appreciation Society members are people who remember to look up and remember to pay attention to the sky. How a group of close to 40,000 people are fighting the tyranny of so-called blue sky thinking. 